Abundant Energy in Harmony with Nature, Wind, Energy, Potential Future, by Larry Hartwig, Zedmaster, at ZeroEnergyDesign.com. Wind and water motion are two very inexpensive ways to harness clean, free energy that comes from the sun. Hydroelectric power has limited growth potential, but we have barely begun to develop abundant, cost-effective wind energy. In his 2007 State of the Union address, President George Bush said, Extending hope and opportunity depends on a stable supply of energy. For too long, our nation has been dependent on foreign oil. We must continue changing the way America generates electric power by even greater use of solar and wind energy. Wind energy availability is excellent in many U.S. locations shown on this map. Purple is excellent, red is outstanding, and blue is superb. Cost-effective wind generation only requires a rating of good with about a 9 mile per hour average prevailing wind. Recently, there's been nearly a 4% per year cost reduction of wind energy equipment. Innovative California used to be number one in U.S. wind energy production. But in 1996, the Texas governor started Wind Energy Initiative, and now Texas is number one in the USA. That 1996 Texas governor was George W. Bush. After Ronald Reagan terminated Jimmy Carter's alternative energy subsidies, wind energy development in America was very slow. But coincidentally, after George Bush became the president, wind energy has grown exponentially in the new millennium. We now have about 12,000 megawatts installed as of June of 2007. America still needs millions of 2.5 megawatt or larger windmills. We have significant undeveloped wind potential. Texas is number one, California is number two, and interestingly enough, little Iowa is number three in wind energy production in the United States. In some parts of the United States, only 22% of high school students graduate, but in Iowa, nearly 24% have a bachelor's degree. In some counties, nearly 50% have a Bachelor of Science or better. Iowa sets the national pace with high education standards. They have an excellent tradition of agricultural community values. With a very small population of only about 3 million, they have energy-intensive industry. People from Iowa are very well educated and outstanding problem solvers. They have the highest per capita of wind energy in America. U.S. energy problems are not a lack of technology. They are a general lack of education. According to the World Wind Energy Association, there has been an international exponential growth in wind equipment demand as shown in megawatts on this chart. Countries around the world are discovering the high cost-benefit ratio of wind energy. It is ironic that U.S. President Jimmy Carter created the Department of Energy, which worked with NASA to develop cost-effective huge wind generators, and then President Reagan reversed Carter's plan and subsidized the oil companies that paid to elect him. The net result has been rapid acceleration of our addiction to imported foreign oil and the necessity to fight oil-related war. America lost a wonderful economic opportunity, and now we buy most of our wind equipment from Denmark, which adversely impacts our trade balance. Corrupt, special interest group, lobbyist-based politics is very expensive. Zero Energy Design thinks windmills are photogenic. Some people think windmills are ugly. They prefer deadly power plants, smokestacks, transformers, transmission towers, and power poles. Ted Kennedy falsely says he supports wind energy, but Ted refuses windmills five miles from his home. Massachusetts has enviable, outstanding wind energy potential, which is much better than Texas or Iowa. The issue is not just a lack of education. It is political, not-in-my-backyard syndrome. There are many wind energy advantages. Lower cost, clean, free, abundant, reliable in many locations. Wind energy is a well-known mature technology with many advances since 1978. It is available in many forms for large or small-scale applications. Wind energy equipment price is continually declining nearly 4% per year. 
Wind energy has no dangerous waste or pollution, no carbon dioxide or global warming greenhouse gases. A turbine can generate power when wind speed is only 9 miles per hour. Technology exists and is being improved to store energy as compressed air or hydrogen for when the wind is not blowing. Denmark gets 20% of its electricity from free wind energy, which is a reasonable short-term goal for many nations. The production of wind energy equipment and installation creates jobs. Denmark is a major wind equipment supplier. Offshore oil platform skills can be reused for wind energy systems. A million new wind-related jobs could be created worldwide. It produces safe power. Wind systems are unlikely terrorist targets. It's a durable technology. Automatic rotor control is necessary in high winds. Technology failures do happen, but they have minimal impact. One key issue is renewable energy storage. Wind energy is roughly four cents per kilowatt hour with the price falling about four percent per year. Long distance electric power transmission can increase the cost. Photovoltaic is about fifteen cents per kilowatt hour falling at seventeen percent per year. Rooftop distributed generation eliminates transmission cost. But the problem is wind and photovoltaic are not available 724-365. Energy storage solutions are not free. Electric battery storage energy density has been improving. From lead acid to nickel cadmium to nickel metal hydride, lithium ion, lithium ion polymer, and Electrovea's new lithium ion super polymer. Energy density per unit of mass and unit of volume have both been improving. A recent wind energy innovation by general compression has been most exciting. It reflects winds of change. They have replaced the windmill gears and generator with a revolutionary, lightweight, intersecting vane, high-tech air compressor. It is claimed to be the lowest cost per kilowatt hour for wind energy. Compressed air stores energy from the wind in a steel well, pipeline, or depleted natural gas field. It's a very low-cost energy transport mechanism. It can be converted to electricity near the point of end use. Long distance pipeline is an advantage because more energy is stored in the pipeline itself. Energy from the wind becomes available 724 when the wind is not blowing and the sun is not shining. You can read about it on the generalcompression.com website. Our world has had centuries of wind driven sailboats, grain mills, and water pumps. Electrical power generation should be close to usage. Some people do not like the look of wind energy. Windmills make a soft sound. They can injure birds. Windmill blades are like airplane wings and propellers. Under freezing rain conditions, they may need de-icing equipment or shut down brake systems. Windmills must automatically stop in high wind. Brake failures can cause self-destruction. Poorly constructed windmills can fall down. Even windmill failures have minimal safety risk. America needs millions of new 2.5 megawatt or larger windmills. This Dutch windmill tree proposal is a wacko idea that might evolve into something interesting in the future. It could have up to eight windmills per tree. Green windmills may eventually emulate green trees. It would be less obtrusive and more efficient than conventional wind farms. The higher altitudes produce higher wind speed. Many innovative future possibilities are limited only by our creative imagination. Redwood trees grow over 360 feet tall and live 2,000 years. We can emulate nature. Innovative 21st century materials like carbon nanotubes might be used to build a structure like this. It could be windproof up to 350 miles per hour. The energy could be stored as compressed air. With a production of electricity below 3 cents per kilowatt hour on a 24 hour day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Abundant energy in harmony with nature. We need to develop our wind potential. See ZeroEnergyDesign.com and our Smart Grid video.